Welcome to a personal interview with Gene Seitz conducted on May 8th by Alex. Okay, um, you are Nellie's granddaughter, so uh, what can you tell me about her personality and her goals in life? She was a very, very active lady for the time that she lived. Um, she was born in 19, um, excuse me, 1885 in Perham, Minnesota, and she came to La Crosse as a young girl. Okay. Um, you said she was active. Uh, what do you mean by that? Maybe I should tell you a little bit about her life. First of all, she was born in Perham, Minnesota in 1885. She was named Nellie Amalia Hahn. Her parents were Hannah Hahn and Gottlieb Hahn. Her father served in the Prussian-French Prussian Army during the war in 1870. Her, in her family, there were five girls and one boy. She spent most of her growing up years in Milston, Wisconsin. As she was a young girl, she received a letter from her mother saying it would be okay to get married. This was prior to 1911. In 1911, on December 20th, she married my grandpa, Chester Souls. Then the following year, my father was born, Robert Earl Souls. Grandma was a stay-at-home mom during those times, but she was very interested in lots and lots of topics. She became interested in politics as a young married woman. Okay. Um, so, what was her motivation in life to do thing, some of the things you mentioned? Well, let me tell you that she was married and had a son, and during that time she became interested in politics. Politics began to interest her more and more as she was a young married woman. She went to Annetka, Illinois to attend the National League of Women Voters 4th Regional Conference on Living Costs. She represented the Living Costs Committee of the La Crosse League of Women Voters. And on April 17th, young Nellie, in 1932, then Mrs. C.E. Souls, announced her candidacy on the progressive ticket for assembly in the 1st La Crosse County District. She entered the race upon her record as a diligent worker in the Progressive Party. She promised to work for the public interest and her belief in progressive principles. At that point, she was one of the very first wo women, if not the first woman, to run for a political office in La Crosse. No, I can't imagine it because when she ran, she was one of five candidates. She was the only woman on the ticket. And as I said, that was April 17, 1932, when she announced her candidacy. The election was held on September 20, 1932, and there were five candidates. Out of the five candidates running, she finished third, so you see she did not achieve her goal of winning that election. But from this time on, she, further interest, she furthered her interest in politics by reading the lives of all presidents. She read the life of every president until 1967 when she died. She was especially fond of John Kennedy, and while he was in office, she made him an all-wool hand-braided rug and sent it to him in Washington. I wonder if it was ever used in the White House. No, when she, when she ran she for the assembly, she didn't accomplish that goal. But as you hear about her later life, you'll see that she was a very ambitious, industrious lady. Um, she enjoyed her membership in the Eastern Star, 
and then my grandpa Souls died in 1940. At that time, there was no way for grandma to support herself and she had to look for work. This was difficult for her because she had not worked outside of the house. One of her first jobs after Grandpa died in 1940 was to be a cook at the Boy Scout camp during the summers. So that makes some relative, that's relative to you, isn't it? Yeah. That was at the Boy Scout camp, which was Camp Ihai, was that the name of it? I, I'm not positive the name of the Boy Scout uh, I camp. I know there's a camp Oh, maybe that was it. Maybe I'm getting the Girl Scout camp mixed yeah, up. Girl Scout camp. Okay. Yeah, and she, she cooked there every summer for the young lads that were there for Boy Scout camp. Um, did, who did you see the like, do the things she did with? Did she do it mostly family or neighbors or friends? Well, she had, um, as I said, she had siblings. She had a brother and four sisters. And part of her life was um, revolved around her sisters. She, after my grandpa died, she, um, having to look for work, worked at the Boy Scout camp. And then after that, she worked at the Emerson School. Are you familiar with the Emerson School? Yeah. Well, back in the 40s, polio was still a very, very serious illness. My grandpa had that. Did your grandpa have it? Oh, my grandma, actually. Oh, grandma. Well, she, Emerson School had a school that was called for orthopedics, and these were for the children that had polio. And they had pools where they brought this, the children or young people in to exercise, and they all, all those students went to, to Emerson School. And once again, she used her talents, and she was the cook for the children at Emerson School during the 40s when polio was still a very serious illness. Okay. Um, what are your fondest memories of her and her life and her just, like, what were your favorite times with your grandma? Oh, there were lots of favorite times with grandma. As a young girl, I can remember grandma babysitting for me, or kid sitting, what, however you want to say it. My father and mother worked in and Grandma took care of my brother and me, and those were very, very fond memories. While Grandma was working at the Emerson School, being the frugal lady she was, she began to save her money because she wanted to make sure that she would have a life for herself. Her first purchase was a fourplex apartment house on the corner of 7th and Pine here in La Crosse. That's where WWTI is now. But she lived in one of the apartments after she fixed up the apartment house. When I was six years old, we moved back to La Crosse, and we lived in that apartment house of Grandma's. And so I have fond memories of that. I have memories of her braiding rugs. She always had a card table set up in her living room, and on that card table she hand braided the rugs because she wanted the rugs to have black um, borders she would go and get old wool clothing from friends or the Salvation Army wherever she could buy and then she would dye the wool and I remember as a young girl watching her prepare these rugs I'm very fortunate to have one in my home today I spent a lot of time with my grandma she spent time at our house. She would come and stay with us in the evenings if my parents had something to do. Um, I spent a lot of time with her as a young girl. And then when I was married, I also spent time with her because we rented one of her apartment houses where City Hall is today on the corner of 7th and La Crosse Street. When, when I was first married, I wasn't very good at saving things and my grandmother being the frugal lady she was saved many things and so whenever my husband would have holes in his socks I would take him down to my grandma and she would use this darning tool to darn my husband's socks because I was going to college and didn't have time to <laughs> darn socks. Being frugal she used everything she could possibly think of. So, uh, this stuff.
The pictures I brought are kind of a pictorial history of my grandmother. This is her father, Gottlieb Hahn, and this is the army outfit he wore when he was in the Prussian Fre French army in 1870. In 1872, she married, um, he married my grandmother's mother, Hannah Zimmerman. This is a picture of Hannah and Gottlieb in 1872 when they were married. Hannah and Gottlieb, as I mentioned to you, had six children, five daughters, and a son. This is a picture of them with three of their children. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of my grandma in this one. This is two of her sisters, actually three of her sisters, Hulda, Hattie, and Alma. The pictures you see here are the Han homestead in Perham, Minnesota, where my grandmother was born. You can see her parents farming much different than the farms of today. Yeah. This is a picture of her mother and father in later years. Then this is a picture of the homestead she lived in when they moved to Milston, Wisconsin. They left the farm in Perham and moved to Milston. Here are some more pictures of her as a young girl. This is a picture of my grandmother and her sister Lucy dressed in their finest quite unlike the clothes yeah. of today. This is a letter that my grandmother received from her mother giving her permission to marry my grandpa. And that letter was written on October 1909. This is a picture of grandma later on in her life. This is the home my grandmother lived in with my grandpa at 1724 Liberty Street might be interesting for you young people to know that Liberty Street before 1918 was called Berlin Street and after the war they changed it from Berlin Street to Liberty Street. Yeah. My grandma and grandpa and my father lived in this house on Liberty Street when they were growing up. Here's a picture of Nellie Chester my grandpa and my father Robert Earl shortly after he was born. Here's Nellie again the proud mother of Robert. It almost looks like Nellie in this picture looks like Martha Washington. Yeah. <laughs> she has an outfit kind of like Martha Washington. And this was just a picture of what the wedding dresses of years ago looked like. She had borrowed this from her sister's family. Right here you'll see the picture when Grandma announced her candidacy for the assembly in the first La Crosse County District. This was an um, assembly woman campaign photo and on this side you'll see the card that she used when she ran for office. It says vote for Nellie Souls for member of assembly first district on the progressive ticket. Good service is my pledge. Sounds like a pretty interesting grandma. She was a wonderful grandma. She during the war, 1942, we moved to Stockton, California, and we were there, my father and mother and I lived in California during the war, and Grandma came to visit. Here you'll see a picture of her visiting. This is my grandma, my dad, and myself as a little girl. This is a picture of my dad and my grandma out in California. If you look down here, I've spilled my bag of popcorn, and I'm picking up the pieces <laughs> of popcorn. The first house that Grandma Souls bought was the apartment complex at 7th and Pine in La Crosse. This is a picture of the house. She lived in the bottom, let's see, bottom fourth on the east, eastern side of the apartment house. My grandmother, her brother, Alan, her sister, Lucy, and her sister, Anna. Later on in 1958, there's a picture here of Grandma at 316 North 22nd Street in La Crosse. That was my parents' home until 1972, and then in 1976, my husband and I bought the home, and we live in the, the Souls house today. Cool. My parents bought it in 1948, and it's been in our family since, right over by Emerson School. This was a family picnic with Grandma way in the back and two of her sisters and her brother. This is my grandma's souls, and if you look closely 
at the feet of us, you'll see one of her beautiful braided rugs. It was very big. It, it filled the whole living room of our house on 22nd Street. It a long time to make. It did, but you know, in those days, there wasn't any television. Yeah. And so besides reading and stitching, besides braiding rugs, she also did a lot of needlepoint. And this is an example of one of her pieces that she made and I'm now the proud owner <coughs> of. This last picture shows the four generations. And I'm really happy to say that I had this picture. There's my grandma Nellie, my father Robert Earl Souls, the picture of me as a new mom, and my our daughter Julie. So this picture is very, very special to us. You know, Grandma, you ask about what she did, and there were a lot of things that she did besides run for office and braid rugs. She did needlepoint. She made furniture, she uh, needlepointed the furniture. There's a love seat and several chairs that my grandma did the needlepoint, which would be the outside covering of the furniture. She loved to do jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> do you do jigsaw puzzles? Yeah. Do you? She loved to do them. She'd have them on her kitchen table because she was alone. As I said, my grandpa died in 1940. And for many years, um, from 40 till 67, grandma was alone. And so she would do jig jigsaw puzzles. She was indeed a remarkable woman, let me tell you that. I wish you could have known her. <laughs> Do you think that the community of lacrosse or some, like, lost something when she died? Or is that... I don't know if we'd say the community of lacrosse unless that you consider the community everyone within it. And yes, then she was a big loss, not only to our family, but to her friends in Eastern Star, to her political acquaintances that she had through her interest in politics. Yes, when she died, there was a loss. That was the heart. <laughs> like I said, I wish you could have known her. She loved young children. <laughs> she did. Well, thank you for coming in. It was a great pleasure to listen to your story about your grandma. Thank you, Alice. Thank Alex, thank you for having me. Yeah. This podcast brought to you from across Wisconsin by the Cooley Kids at Longfellow Middle School in conjunction with the League of Women Voters.